Hi, I'm Matthew Tompkins with a tutorial for the Creative Cow. Last time we looked at creating a liquid type effects within After Effects, specifically these paint uh, droplets. We used the CC Particle World plugin and we explored some of its features. And uh, I also applied the CC Vector Blur. And the algorithm of this Vector Blur helps encourage um, these kind of uh, pseudo interactions we have between the particles as they pass each other. This time I'm going to further refine the animation and I'm going to add some uh, further touches to our particles here also. So first of all I'll just come into this uh, <clears throat> this uh, layer here and I'll press the enter key just to rename it and I'll call this Particle Shadow. As you can see that's these uh, smudges we have in the background here. And I can reposition this uh, this layer so that uh, it's in more of a visually interesting position. Let's come in here and also come to Effect, Blur, Fast Blur. I'll just add two pixels of blur onto that too. And T for opacity. Just bring this down to about 15. I'll enable this curves effect I previously applied and uh, I'll add some more in the midtones and also increase the highlights here. Okay, that should be fine. Then I'll come across to the paint droplets layer and here we can see uh, a particle field without the background and uh, as I kind of mentioned last time, there's not as much interaction happening currently between all these particles. You see little examples of it but not as much as I'd like. So, uh, well, first of all, I'm just going to come into the adjustment layer. I'm just going to delete our uh, radial fast blur there. I'll also increase the vector blur up. So to about 21, which is pretty okay. Then I'm going to come into our paint layer. And I'm going to come to physics. And I'm going to change the animation from twirl down to twirly. As you can see here, there's a lot more motion uh, within the particles especially across the uh, the x-axis now whereas before it was it's mainly on the z and slightly on the y so it's good to have those happening except uh, it's all happening a little too fast so i can uh, add some resistance which is the same as kind of thickening the air that they're traveling through if i come down to quarter here and uh, do a run preview, we can get a better idea of uh, the speed they're currently traveling at now. Okay, that's looking, uh, it's looking a lot better. I'm happy with the speed. There's perhaps too many particles currently, so if I come again into the uh, birth rate keyframes here at the beginning of the composition, just drag this layer out. I can then use the J and K key just to hop between these two keyframes. And on the first keyframe, I'm going to change the birth rate from 8 down to um, try 4. Let's drag these back. Let's have a look. Maybe still too many. Try 3.5. Okay, I'll stick uh, with that here. Then on this uh, final distance keyframe, if I just scroll down to the value here, I'll just bring uh, the camera in just a little closer. I'll move the uh, the Y position of our producer down and also just try increasing this, uh, this Y radius. And also come into the particle settings here and I'll uh, increase the 
birth size quite substantially and also the death size and for the max opacity I'm going to choose try 75 okay that's looking quite nice I'll just bring the uh, resolution up again now the only thing I want to be careful of are uh, particles such as this one crossing the center of our composition which reveals a little too much of our background four color gradient and especially against the background um, this this really ca can distract here um, so I'll try playing around with the velocity here and say that shifted this one aside at that point I can see there's uh, plenty of other examples All I'm seeking to do is just try to minimize uh, this effect here as uh, much as I can. As you can see it's uh, quite a tricky uh, thing to do, especially with so many particles all flying around. As I say, I can change the uh, the Y radius there. Here's another little tricky one. There's perhaps ways around this where I could create some kind of uh, blurry mask on the background or something like that, but just spending a little time here is uh, probably the best option. Okay, so the others passing through aren't too bad and they're relatively quickly passing through okay so I'll, I'll stick with what I have there Let me just check uh, our other settings we might need to come back and change the max opacity um, depending on uh, how it looks on the background so I'm going to come now into our paint layer And here I can uh, begin to toy around with adding some kind of uh, texture onto the particles. So if I come to our main particle layer, which is our paint droplets layer here, and if I hold down Control or Command on the Mac in the D key, and if I just hit this uh, twice to make two duplicates, and just delete the uh, curves effects off the top one, I'll just reset this one for now. And then on the bottom of the two, I'm going to come across the track mat column. And if you can't see this column here, just press the F4 key. Just to toggle between the two views here. And I'm going to choose, I think this might just be on the very edge of the recording area. I'm going to choose the alpha inverted mat. And then if I uh, just solo this, we can see uh, what this has uh, created, essentially. And if I come up to our top layer here, which is actually... Uh, Matt, we're looking through and come to uh, Matt Choker. We can then just uh, choke this uh, alpha in, or in this case, out to its very edges. And then here, I'm just going to bring this uh, white point all the way to the left, and also the black point up to the top left. And you see we have this white uh, type cusp. If I come down here and on the mode, I change this to add. And then if I unsolo my layer, you can now see this uh, white line behind our particles. And if I choose this bottom of the two duplicates and I press the arrow keys, I can just shift this up 
so it's uh, it's just mainly on the top side of our particles now. If I press the T key for opacity, I can also fine tune this a bit further. I think this may be about 33, this should be fine. And if I take another copy of our main paint droplets layer, holding down Control or Command on the Mac, D key, and I'm just going to bring this up to the top. And this time I'm going to come to Effect, Color Correction, Hue Saturation. And I'm going to bring down the Master Lightness all the way down to negative 100. And if I press T for Opacity, I'm just going to uh, then just tune this so uh, I can see the effect on my particles. We're just bringing back some of the the detail here by just uh, tinting it a bit. As you can see, just emphasizing uh, emphasizing it, bringing that back. I could also come here to layer new solid. Alternatively, I could press the uh, controller command key and the Y key. And I'll just, uh, let's call this vignette. If I press the Q key twice to get the uh, circular mass shape. Let's drag this out now. I just want to bring my uh, mask up a little, just use my arrow keys again. Zoom out of my viewer. Just bring this here, press MM. I'm just going to feather this out and then invert it. Feather this further. Come down to expansion. Let's expand this out. Press T for opacity. And then just make this just a subtle vignette just to draw the eye into the center of our composition here. And the other thing I do is just coming back into the paint droplets, take a look at my CC vector blur here, and just to make sure. Uh, that image is looking as sharp as I like. I'm just going to put the amount to 19. And uh, I'll actually bring this matte softness down to 3.4. Now you might not be able to see this um, on the screencast, but 100% that really makes a difference. So I'll just go back and maybe bring up the matte softness, perhaps a bit higher now. 10.3 Again, I'm just trying to uh, balance this out So I'm just looking at uh, the tinting effect here again, just dial play around with the dial here on this Okay, that should be fine. And uh, finally, we're going to come to the paint droplets layer here, and I'm going to come to effect, distort, and I'm going to choose turbulent display. So this is just off the bottom of the screen, but it's there. And I'm going to change the displacement type to twist, and I'm going to change the amount to 19, and the size to. 14. Okay, you can see we've uh, stopped the irregular, or we've made the shapes a bit more irregular from the circular particle. So now, if you look especially over the time, you can see how uh, 
these are actually behaving much more like uh, droplets, water droplets, or the droplets of liquid. Coming back to my paint, uh, main paint composition, we can see that here. Okay, that's all looking good. I'll uh, just pause this whilst I do a REM preview. Okay, so the REM preview is finished. Let's just uh, play that back now. So you can see our particles now have this uh, nice edge effect, very liquidy as they pass through the air. Um, there's quite a bit of uh, interaction between these liquidy looking particles. It's probably a little too fast still uh, to really show off uh, some of the vector blur type effects. So what I'll do is in part three I'll uh, look at time remapping this clip and just tweaking it a little further. I'm Matthew Tompkins. Thank you.